And before I give you the title of this message today, I wanted to share uh, where it came from. I want to tell you that, uh, you know, I was studying the book of Joshua, and that's what, what, what inspired this lesson today. But see, Joshua was known for being a warrior. He was also known for being a, a, a strategic warrior. In fact, he is one of, uh, if, you, if I study the fact on him, he is one of the all, or few men who made it from uh, being in slavery in Egypt to the wilderness with Moses and Aaron and got to actually go into the promised land. Actually, he got to go into the promised land because he kind of led the way. He was the one that stood up. He was obedient. One of the things that he was his, one of his greatest strengths and characteristics was that he was a good leader. But more even than that is that he obeyed God that Joshua obeyed God. He was obedient to God. So in the book of Joshua, if you go toward the end, the last two chapters, 23, 24, uh, he, he calls together all of the uh, uh, Israelites, and he called together their leaders, and he called together all the tribes. And, and he's saying, you know, I'm getting older in age because he's their leader. I'm getting older in age, but I need to remind you of some things. I need to remind you of who we were. I need to remind you of the promise that God made to Abraham uh, and Isaac and Jacob. I need to remind you that we were in slavery, but God is the one who brought us out. I need to remind you that we were stuck in the wilderness, but God helped us get through that. And I need to remind you that even all the battles and things we've been through in, in life, God has brought us out. He's been faithful to us. So it's time to remember what he has done for us, and we need to continue to be faithful to him. This is Joshua speaking. And he's saying, and I have a message for you. This is why I've called everybody together. Uh, we need to remember these things and we need to be obedient to him he's going to lead us he's going to help us so don't go right don't go left stay on the path that God has for us and he will bless you but if you don't want to do that and that's why I want to go today but if you don't want to do that and if you'll go to the scripture here but if you don't want to do that and 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 and, and here's 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 where it gets it gets real sticky right here because he, he makes it clear he said but if if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, you know, if that's not good enough for you, then, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether it's God, God's, uh, God's your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites. In whose land you now living? But then this is the important part. He says, but for me and my household, some Bible say me and my family, we will serve the Lord. He says, but for me, you guys can do what you want to. See, I just told you that you need to be careful. I just told you that God is going to do a great thing. I just told you God did all of these wonderful things for you, and you should be thankful. You should be praising him. And we've been in contact with all of these different tribes and different religions, and now they got these different gods, but you need to remember who the true and real God is. And, and if you forget, that's on you. But see, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So throughout this lesson today, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say, as for me and my house, and I'm going to say, you finish it, and you're going to say, I, I didn't hear you. That didn't say what? So, so let's try it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I want you to say it each time with that enthusiasm and that ambition. I want you, because I want the people that live behind us to hear you. And I want people driving by to hear you. And I want people who are pulling up in the lot coming late. I want them to hear you. I want them to know that you have vigor for serving the Lord. Amen. That's for me and my house. You finish it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So today's message is called this. Me and my house. See, me and my house. As for me and my house, you finish it. So just as Joshua told all of these elders and these leaders and the people as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I want you to think about this. No matter what you are going through today, no matter what's going on in your life and going on around your life, you got to be determined to serve the Lord. you got to know that there's a process to things. And you got to know that the enemy is going to throw any and everything he can throw your way to trip you up because he does not want you to succeed. And he really doesn't want you to serve the Lord. Why are you preaching this on Father's Day? Because, see, i got to tell you this real quick. There's a breakdown in our culture of fathers. And see, if you can break down the culture uh, of, of to, to not uh, acknowledge the fathers or the fathers not being there, then you can break down that connection between the heavenly father. Although the heavenly father is nothing like the earthly father, we as people, as humans, we make that connection. Well, if my father is like that and my father wasn't no good and my father was this and that and so forth and so on, why would I want to serve another father? 
You see what I'm saying? That's the, by design that the enemy sets that up. He sets it up so that we have this breakdown in our culture. You know, and I was having this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday, and we were talking about how he had two fathers, a real father and a stepfather, and with both of them he had complicated relationships. But it wasn't just him. It's a lot of men today struggle because they didn't have a father figure. Now, it's not just the earthly father figure's fault because we should be connected with our heavenly father. But again, by design, it's been things to set up to break down the system. Can we get some fans on in here? It's kind of woo -hoo. It's kind of warm in here. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Or maybe it's my preaching. Maybe I'm catching fire while I'm preaching up here. Woo -hoo. <laughs> but we got to understand that and we got to know that that's a battle that we got to fight every day. You see, when Mother's Day comes around, we are excited. We give our mother. We plan that thing three months months in advance. We're going to take them out to dinner. We're going to give them flowers. We're going to love them. We don't give them, we're going to buy them rings and bracelets and juries because our moms deserve that. Do they not? Our moms deserve that. Absolutely. Our women are strong. They are mighty. God created woman to be, to, to complete the man. And so without, uh, with one of them without the other, there's not a completion. And then unfortunately, in a lot of our homes, we have broken homes. A lot of us come from broken homes. So thank God for things like moms and dads who still, who still see it all the way through. Thank God for those blended families that they say, well, maybe that didn't work, but we're going to make this thing work. Thank God because as for me in my house, you finish it. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. So you see, you got to have that attitude of job. So here, here's what I want us to do today. This is what I want us to do today. we got to make a decision, and we got to make a decree. As for me in my house, you finish it. We got to make this a decision. See, honey, will you give me my bag? I have these little props because I know that in every home, in every home, we have some of these items that I wanted to show you today. Uh, uh, some of these items, like I'm sure everybody's got one of these in your house. Uh, and it says faithful, and it's got a dub on it. You know, we got stuff like this in our entryway, on our walls, in the living room. We got stuff in the bathroom, right? We, we got, we got, it, says, it, says, it says faithful, faithfully, I'm sorry. It says faithfully, okay? We got this stuff in our house, and it's cute, and we want people to see it. But after a while, that thing starts collecting dust, and we, and we don't see it no more. We don't see it no more, and we don't understand what that being faithful really is. You know, it's just cute. It's hanging up, and it's a cross. Thank you, Jesus. But, you know, I'm saying this is just a symbol, but these are the kind of things we have. Who has stuff like this in your house? Raise your hand. Shout, shout. You got stuff like this in your house. Okay. All right, all right, and then I got another thing here. My wife was so kind enough to let me borrow these things. She said, you better not break them, you better not drop them, you better bring them back home, too. Don't leave them up at the church. And this one right here, this is like a little bowl. You can do things like this, put it on your table, put it somewhere. And it says, faith, faith, you got to have faith. You got to have the faith of a what? A what, a what, a what? And if you got faith and everybody in your house got faith, as for me and my house, you finish it. We will serve the Lord. So, see, when you got stuff like this in your house, people come over, they thank you faithful, they thank you serving the Lord. A lot of people got a Bible sitting in their houses. You know, they got it sitting on an entryway or they got it sitting somewhere, and you go touch that thing, it got dust all on it. Watch out there now. Did I, am I getting in somebody's business? And then I noticed the other day as, 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 as God is preparing, wait, wait, here's another cross. Here's another cross. Uh, this one don't say, it says a lot of things. I am holy. Uh, it says all this other stuff. It says the way and the truth and the life. It has all these cool things. Uh, bread of life, uh, God the shepherd. It's got all these cool things and writings on This is a cool cross. If I had a tattoo, this would be, boom, I'll put it right there like that. You know what I'm saying? But this, we got stuff like this in our homes. We got similar. Some of us wear crosses. We wear jewelry. Uh, uh, but, you know, sometimes just because we got that stuff on don't mean anything. And so, you know, uh, Please forgive me, but I was getting out of the shower the other day, and I was noticing there was a sign that hung up, and I was like, my goodness, I didn't even know. I forgot that sign was there. <laughs> my goodness, as I'm preparing this lesson, as God gives me this scripture, this is what hangs in my bathroom. My wife said, I better bring that back home. Uh, uh, but it says, as for me and my house, you finish it. We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. We can't just have these symbols around, and we can't just be saying it, Lord, ladies and gentlemen. We got to apply it. We got to apply it to my, uh, to my life, your life. We got to apply it. We got to serve God. And that doesn't just mean on Sundays or Wednesdays or when somebody from our church sees us. We need to always be serving the Lord in the workplace, in our neighborhoods, no matter where we're going. You don't have to preach and spit on people like I say all the time. All you got to do is live in love. All you got to do is love people, and they will see the God in you. Amen? They will see the God in you. And all they got to do is see your kids. Even though our kids don't do everything we want them to, they don't act like we always want them to, they don't always represent. I know. 
know I taught you better than that. But still, people are able to see the fruits of how your household. A lot of the problems that we have in our world today, we can blame it on the schools, we can blame it on political parties, but a lot of the problems start at the house. It starts at the house. See, if we can straighten that stuff up in the house when they get out in the world, yeah, they might stray a little bit, but they'll remember their roots. What does the Bible say about the to raise a child in the ways that he should go and they will return eventually, something like that? You know, I'm just paraphrasing. But ladies and gentlemen, as for me and my house, you finish it. See, see, I am a father I, 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 to my, or my, or my husband, to my wife, and, and, you know, in our house, we have always made it where you will serve the Lord. Even when we were kind of like in the world, you know, we would try to make those efforts to go to church because we knew we had this desire. We knew we needed to be serving the Lord. And, and, you know, things were always crazy until we made that choice to serve the Lord. And I say things were always crazy, but when you make a decision to serve the Lord, things are going to get even crazier. Did you know that? It makes you want to back off a little bit like, oh, wait, dang, maybe we should stop going to church. Maybe, dang, maybe we should stop praying. Maybe I shouldn't be in that word. I don't want to be responsible for the things that the enemy is going to throw at me. But see, Joshua, he had this attitude. Remember, I told you he was a warrior. He had his gift. One of his gifts was he was a strategic planner for war. That's why they were able to go in and conquer all the land of Canaan when they did. In fact, God gave him this crazy strategy one time that they were going to go to some place called Jericho. And the way they were going to defeat that thing was they were going to walk around it and march and, and shout and blow trumpets. What? What kind of battle strategy is that? But do you know that it worked? Because he was obedient to God, don't matter how crazy it sounded. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go through some crazy things in life, and God's going to give you some crazy ideas, but you must be obedient. Because as for me and my house, you finish it. Okay, you got to be willing to do this. And I want to give you a couple of instances in the Bible where there's, there's this attitude, the same attitude. It wasn't this scripture, but they had the same attitude. In fact, these two case, occasions I'm going to tell you about is in the book of Daniel, one of my favorite books. But if you go to Daniel 6, for example, I'll give you this. Daniel had this attitude. It's no matter what's going on around me, no matter what's happening to me. You see, because Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and several others were brought over as slaves. When King Nebuchadnezzar brought them over, they were slaves. Did you know that? Some people, if you do that, strip them out of their land, take them away from everything they know, make them learn a new language, they would just break down and just be pitiful. Now, Daniel, because see, he had this attitude of, as for me and my house, you finish it. We will serve the Lord. So because of his attitude of serving God and no matter what was happening to him or around him or to his people, he had favor with the Lord. And because he had favor with the Lord, the Lord gave him favor with man. So he had favor with the king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was a crooked, stubborn, knuckle-headed king. I mean, he just didn't get it. But, but because of Daniel, God was able to get to this man because of Daniel's faithfulness and because of his attitude of, as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what. So if you skip, you know, he went through Nebuchadnezzar, then he went through this Belshazzar guy, and that guy didn't last very long because, you know, he, he, he started playing with God, and he got what was coming to him, okay? And so the second time, he, or the third time, he runs into this uh, king, and they called him Darius the Mede. Okay, this Mede and the Persians, okay? He runs into this, this king, and then God gives him favor with him. In fact, he liked Daniel so much that, uh, you know, they were, he, he divided the kingdom up into province. And so when he divided them up, he put Daniel and, and some of these up. Daniel was doing such a fabulous job. He's like, dang, this dude that serves that God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and that Israelite God, whatever, this, this guy is for real. He's serious. He's on point. He's faithful. He's trustworthy. He just, man, no matter what's going on in his life, he is a faithful man. He is faithful. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put this guy over everything. Uh Uh-oh, watch out there. You're going to put us over everything? That means some people got to submit to him. So you know what happens when you got haters? Haters. They drinking haterade. You know, haters. They got real upset about this. And they said, we got to figure out a way to take this guy down. We got to find some dirt on him. Guess what? Couldn't find no dirt. Couldn't find, well, maybe he's got a scandal. Let's look on Facebook and see if he got some pictures, you know, doing something he shouldn't be doing. You know, they were just trying to find dirt on Daniel, and they couldn't find any dirt. So they said, we got to figure out a way to trap this guy. You know what we can do? 
We can use his own faith and his faithfulness and his religion against him. And before I go any further, I just want you to know this. When you're a Christian, when you decide to be a Christian, the enemy is going to try to take you out in any way he can, using anybody, anything. He will try to take you out. And some of you are experiencing this. Some of you have experienced this. Some of you will experience it. People will try to take you down. You can be faithful, honest, good, and it feels like, man, what's the point? Everybody else is crooked and warped. And What's the point of me being a good guy or a good girl? What's the point? It doesn't doesn't seem like it's effective, but it is because God still sees you and he will reward you. God will reward you because as for me and my house, just wanted to make sure you guys were still awake and paying attention. Amen. So anyway, going back to Daniel, so they figure out how can we trip this guy up? You know what? You know, he's always praying. He's always praying. You notice he prays a lot. That man's always praying. He's a faithful prayer. Maybe we could, you know what? Let's go to Darius the Mede and see if we can't convince him to make a law that you can't, for 30 days, no praying to any other God or any other person. How about we do that? And so, you know, if you're a king, if you've got a lot of power, sometimes you're easily influenced when people stroke your ego. So they went to him and said, you know what? You've done such a fabulous job. How about we do this? For 30 days, let's make a law. Let's make a law that for 30 days, no one can worship or pray to any other God or any person but you. He said, oh, you know, that sounds like a good idea. That, that sounds like a good idea. I like that. Let's do that. He said, we got to make a law. And if anyone does, they get thrown into lion's den. And they're like, yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's do that. Let's do that. So they do that. They make a decree. And sure enough, faithful as Daniel is, and he's thinking to himself, I know what was set up, but as for me in my house, we, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's what Daniel's attitude was. So he went and he prayed, and sure enough, they caught him. Now, how were they going to catch him? You know how they caught him? They had to be watching him, right, waiting for him to do what they know he's going to do and know he's faithful with so they can trip him up with it. But here's the thing. The enemy has to do that. If you're so good and you do what you know you're supposed to do, the enemy will make stuff up to get you in trouble. And that's what they did here. They made something up to get him in trouble. So then they go back and, and they say, hey, Darius, the Mede, Oh, almighty one, didn't we just make a law that said nobody can pray for 30 days to anybody or any God except you? He said, yep, yep, that's what we said. He said, well, that dude, Daniel, he's over there praying, praying to his God. And he was like, oh, snap, but I like Daniel. I like Daniel. And they're like, but you said, remember what the law said, but you said. So guess what they had to do? They had to throw Daniel in the lion's den. And the lions were hungry. But you know what? Because of Daniel's faith, because of his attitude of, as for me in my house, you finish it. We will serve the Lord because of his attitude that no matter what's going on around me, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, I'm going to continue to praise him. I'm going to continue to worship him no matter what's going on. I don't care what they say, what they say. My God has been faithful to me. Come on, if you know he's been faithful to you and you know you've been through some stuff and God has still brought you through, you should be giving him a praise right now because God is good. He is good and he is faithful. He is trustworthy. He's the same today. Yesterday and forever. That's the God that we serve. Amen? That's the God. So Daniel had this attitude, but because he had this attitude and he got dropped in that lion's den, the king Darius is sick because he's like, that was my man. And I was getting ready to put him on it. That's my man. I can't believe I had to do that to him. However, because of God, the God we serve, those lions didn't touch him. I think they left him in there for a few days. They left him in there for a few days, and it just didn't happen. Finally, the king was like, pull him up out of there, and y'all get in there, the people that set him up. So they got, hey, so that's what God will do for you and your enemies when you have that attitude. Let me give you another story in Daniel. If you go back a few chapters, if you go to, if you go to Daniel 3, if you go to Daniel 3, uh, uh, it tells a story about those other friends that were with Daniel that were just as faithful, and their name was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you see, one time this king, we're going back to the king Nebuchadnezzar now, he said, uh, you know, y'all going to serve this statue that I built. Well, it's a long story there, but he built a statue, the one that Daniel told him not to, the one that God warned Daniel to tell him and warned him not to build, but he built it anyway. And he said, everybody need to worship. And kind of the same thing, nobody worship anything else but my statue. And these guys are like, well, you're not worshiping that statue. I'm sorry. And so you're not going to worship. In fact, they got brought before the king, like, they're telling everybody else they're not going to do it. And they're like, okay, well, let's take it to the king. Let's take it to the king. See how bad, big and bad you're going to be when you're in front of the king. And they said, he said, 
So I'm going to give you all a chance here. Basically, this is what he did. And I'm paraphrasing, and I'm going along just for the sake of the story. And, and he says, now, you know, I'm kind of giving you all a chance here. You said, what? They said, yeah, sorry. And they were really kind about it. They were really respectful. No disrespect. In fact, they were like, your majesty, we just can't. We can't. Because of the God we serve, we can't bow down to your statue. We can't worship anything else but our God. That statue ain't did nothing for us. That statue ain't brought us through hell and back. That statue has done nothing for us. And I guess he's thinking, oh, hell and back. Okay, well, how about this? I'm going to light up a furnace for y'all. I'm going to make the furnace the hottest furnace that you've ever seen. And I'm going to throw y'all in it if y'all don't act right. Now, I'm going to give you a chance here. Y'all go ahead and start that fire. Get that thing started. Get it the hottest you've ever gotten. It. Get that thing out. I'm going to give y'all a chance here now. You going to bow down on my statue? We can't. We can't. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benigo had this attitude as, as for me and my house, you finish it. They're like, no matter what you say you're going to do to us, we are still going to serve that Lord. They even say this, even if he don't come through, even if, even if he don't come through, who is still going to serve that Lord? We're going to serve our God, the God who has brought us through hell and back. So if you want to throw us in that thing, so be it. You know, they get this fire so hot that the people making the fire, they die. It's so hot they can't even, and then, then when they get ready to go throw these guys in it, the guys that are trying to throw them, they die. I think they finally say, y'all go ahead, we'll walk on in, forget it, we'll walk in. Y'all stay back so y'all don't get hurt. They walk in this thing, and it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's three of them. All of a sudden, there's a fourth. Who that in there with that? Who is that? Didn't we just put, this is the king, didn't we just put three of them in there? What's the fourth one in there? The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Savior. You see, no matter what fire is going on in your life, if you take on the attitude, as for me and my house, you finish it. I said, as for me and my house, you finish it. If you take on that attitude, you're going to go through some stuff. And people are going to look at you funny. They're going to treat you funny. They're going to act funny to you. But if you know who you are, whose you are, and what you can do, I can do all things through Christ who? If you know these things and it's in your heart, there's nothing anyone can do or anything that can stop you from God blessing you, and he will. God will bless you no matter what it looks like. Oh, this ain't looking good. They think, oh, I hope God can pull us through. How many of you know, how about this? Testify. How many of you have had a moment where you're like, I don't see how this thing going to work out? This ain't looking good. I think this might be the one time God won't come through for us. And he shows up and he shows out. Can I get a, can I get an amen? All right. Can I get an amen? God has been so faithful. I get to the point now where I just stop worrying. I might, I'm human, so it's not like I'm not going to get that rising up in me. But then I get to thinking, I was like, what happened last time where I thought it was impossible and God came through? And I don't, and I still can't give you a logical explanation of how it worked out. All I can tell you is God came through. Well, can you give me some details? I really can't. Well, can you explain it? Just like when my wife and I decided to step out on faith and decided we were going to, I was going to go into music ministry and I'm going to quit my job of 17 years with all free benefits and, 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 uh, I don't know how many weeks of vacation I had. I'm going to leave that all behind to go chase ministry. Uh, you know, yeah, well, I, we added that thing up on paper, and it just, oof, that don't look right. That, that, I don't, the car, we'll lose the house. We'll lose the cars. We probably wouldn't be able to eat. That just don't look right. But let me tell you something. God is faithful. Not only did he see us through that thing, we ended up having more money than we ever had. Although it didn't look right, it didn't add up in my tax bracket. It's like, I don't see how we're surviving. I don't see how we're surviving and then some. Because God is faithful. No matter what it looks like, no matter what's going on in your life, if you have this attitude that as for me and my house, you finish it. We will serve the Lord when you take on that attitude. I'm telling you, it's like a, oh man, a battle ram. Just boom, nothing can get in your way. Boom, like a tank. And nothing and nobody just crushing your enemies and crushing the devil and crushing all those, the sickness and crushing the lies and, and crushing anything that can come against you. Your financial woes. I don't see how you're going to pull us out of this, God. Of course, you got to do your part, but if you have this attitude that as for me and my house you finish it if you have that attitude you can make it through amen i got another thing for you if you look at this scripture here if you look at this scripture out of romans 8 31 new living translation it says this it says this what shall we say about such wonderful things as these if god is for us who could ever be against us 
If God is for us, who could ever be against us? I want you all to say that with me. If God is for us, who could ever be against us? I want you all to say it one more time. If God is for us, who could ever be against us? Now I want you guys to stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Hallelujah. We're going to say that one more time. As for me and my house, you finish. And if God is for us, who could? If God is for us, who could? As for me and my house, you finish it. As for me and my house, you finish it. As for me and my house, you finish it. If God is for us, hallelujah, give him a praise in this place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.